acting a circle. There's three variations, A, B, and C. First thing you're going to do, is what we're going to do is we're going to use a clock system. Get used to going from 12 to 3 to 6 to 9, and then to our 45 degree angles of 2.30, 4.30, 7.30, and 10.30. First thing you do is you start in a neutral stance in the center of the clock. Step into fighting stance to 12 o'clock. You're going to chop the neck, bring it back, and chop the groin. From here, you're going to keep about the height the same. You don't want to come up or down. You're going to slide in to cat, slide out of cat. Chop neck and chop the groin to 3 o'clock. Same thing, slide in, slide out to 6. Chop the neck, chop the groin. You're going to come back up, slide back out. Chop the neck, chop the groin. Now we're going to go to our 45s. Go to 2.30. Come back in, go to 4.30, come back up, go to 7.30, and then go to 10.30. The reason for this is to help your students work the heel toe relationship and try to get rid of a lot of bobbing method. To make sure you are in fighting stance, we have attacking the circle B, using the same exact angles. But this time when we step in, instead of doing the double chop, we're going to chop the arm and throw a reverse punch just like Japanese sword B. So we'll do that at all the angles. Just step in, chop, punch. Make sure you're in a good solid hard bow, come back to stance. Attack at your different angle. Chop the punch, and then strike. Come in, walk, punch. variation of the C variation. This is where you as a student get to make up your own kata or fighting situation. You have four opponents. You can put them anywhere you want in a 360 degree circle. What you do with them is up to you. You can do any kind of attack, initiate any way you want. The basic rule of thumb usually is the first guy you want to take out should be the nastiest thing you can think of and then take a spot. Cut the circle in half. The next technique that's required for yellow belt is stop hits, A through E. These will be for right punches, is what we're going to demonstrate them for, but they can be used for right or left punches, and we advise that you practice using them for both sides. The first technique, A version, is for a right punch. You're going to throw a punch, you're going to step in and grab the arm. Try to grab it as soon as you can. Then from here, you're going to throw a vertical punch into the jaw, the solar plexus, or the groin depending on the easiest available target. Again, he throws his punch, come in and block and grab, and then strike. Try to get where you can do this move at the same exact time. The B version, this is for someone that may be about your height, not someone that's really taller than you. The guy comes in, throws his right punch, we're going to elbow into the chin. Okay? Again, he comes in, elbow the chin. If the guy is too tall and you just insist on using this technique, go right to the solar plexus with it. But it is designed to go to the chin and it's an uppercut with the elbow. One more time, throws his punch, walk and strike. C variation, same thing, right punch, walk it, heel palm right to the jaw. Again, comes in, walk and strike. Okay, D variation. This time we've been stepping with our left at this point. Now we're going to step in with our right, go to the outside of the body just a little bit. Same punch, a right punch. Come in, chop or grab, either one's acceptable, striking the temple. Okay? Again, block and strike. There again, if you need to, you can always change your targeting. The last variation is the E variation. He throws his right punch. This time we're going to block and chop to the neck. Again, lock and chop. Now as I said, these could be used for left or right punches. So I'm going to have James here throw a left punch. I come in, I can still chop the temple, or if I wanted to use the E version, I can chop into the rib cage. 
Let's go through all of them again one more time, starting with A. A throws his punch, get in and grab, vertical punch to the face. B version, grab, elbow into the chin. C version, here, grab, heel palm. D version, this time we're stepping in with our right, hair fist to the temple or the ribs. Last version is the E version. Throws his right punch, chop the neck. The next technique we're going to go over is called Chinese sword. The A version will be for right and the B version for left. But on the street, it's not going to really matter which one you do. First thing you want to do is you're going to step in and do an inward block as you cover. Break down the nerve and clear the arm away and chop down through the collarbone back into a soft bow. This way your hand's in a chamber position and you can come back out and strike if you need to. Again, you step in and block, break and clear the arm, chop down into a soft bow, bring the hand into chamber. That's the A version. The B version, if the guy throws a left punch, you don't have time to determine right or left. You just have to react. You've done your block. You realize it was a left punch, so you can clear the area like before. Throw your body weight into it and back fist into the temple. Again, we step in and clear, block, clear, and back fist. On an opponent, on the A version, he throws his right punch, block into the radial nerve, clear the arm away, chop down into the collarbone. Again, block, clear, and chop. The B version, he throws a left punch this time. Step in and block the same way, but if you notice, the collarbone's not available. So we're going to get it out of the way and back fist into the face. Again on B, block, back fist. Let's try from this angle. Okay, right punch, block. Try to get an inward block right into that radial nerve. Break it away. Chop right down on that collarbone to make sure you go to soft bow so you can come in and strike back. B version is a left punch. Lock, break, back fist. The next technique that's required for the yellow belt and the white tiger Kempo Jiu Jitsu system is called the laid sword A and B variation. On the A variation, what we're going to do is we're going to go into a catch stance, do a cover and block. This one, by going to cat, it'll get your foot to protect the groin, plus it keeps it from getting jammed up so you can do a front snap kick. As you block the right punch, you're going to front snap kick the groin. This should double your opponent over. As you step down, you're going to chop him right into the neck, just as we did in Chinese Sword. Again, as he throws his punch, back off just a bit, block the punch, front snap kick, chop down on the collarbone. The B version, the what if. What if the guy backs up on you before you have a chance to finish your technique? You've done your block, you've done your kick, and he's moved on you. So as you step down, you're going to pull yourself forward and go into a crossing back kick. We get on B, we step back, we've thrown a front snap kick, he's moved. So go right into a crossing back kick and get him that way. How do we do it on an opponent? As your opponent throws his right punch, Back up just a bit. Back up too far, you're not going to kick the groin. So just enough to get out of the way of the punch. Kick him in the groin as he doubles over. Chop him right under the neck. One more time. Punch, kick, and chop. The B version. Let's back up just a little bit. This time as he throws the punch, I want to step back and block. Now maybe I step back too far, I go throw a kick, and he moves on me. He backs away. At this point, I'm going to go in a crossing back kick and follow him. Okay, again, throws his punch. I block, I go to kick, he moves on me. Now I'm going to get out of his, follow him into it with a crossing back kick. Let's try it from this angle. Okay, a right punch. Block. Kicking the groin, double him over. Land into that chop when you land your foot. Again, block and cover. Always use your check hand. Kick him, chop straight down. The B variation, throws his punch, you go to kick, he moves on you, 
follow them with your crossing back kick. That's what it's designed for. Next technique we're going to go over is knee of vengeance. This is for someone who grabs and tries to push or pull on you. When the guy grabs, as he pulls or pushes on you, it will depend on whether you push in or pull out. First thing you want to do is you want to counter grab something. Try to grab a hold of his biceps or his shoulders or a shirt or jacket, anything you can get your hands on. You're going to pull him straight into you, knee him into the groin. From here, you're going to just let gravity take over and drop that foot. Using the heel of the foot, drop it right on his instep. Try to get yourself into a soft bow. Get that left leg up on the ball so that you can use your hips to strike with. Because at this point, we're going to grab him by the hair, pull him into us as we let the body move the elbow right into the side of the head or the orbital eye socket. Once again, we're going to grab, pull him into the knee, stomp the instep, try to break that foot, grab him by the hair, and sandwich the head. For an opponent, as your opponent grabs, you're going to pull him right into you. This can go in the solar plexus or it can go over the knee, depends on how close he is to you. Take the heel, stomp on the small of the foot. Grab him by the hair, pull him into you, elbow right into the face. Let's try from this side. Grabs, pull him in, bring that knee straight up. Drop it straight down on the foot, either foot, it doesn't really matter. Make sure your feet are set up, grab him by the hair, pull him in, place that head right where you want it. Again, grabs, pull, knee. Drive this up as high as you can go when you're practicing so you get a good solid strike on the street. Stomp down, get the body weight settled, grab him by the hair, and strike him in the face. The next technique we're going to go over is called Fang of the Cobra. This is for a two-hand choke. First thing you want to do is you want to pin the hands and start getting some air back into you and also control the hands so they don't counter grab you or strike. Then you're going to step in. Now the original technique called for a spear hand to the throat this way. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you come in this way, it's a little bit stronger of a strike. And I'll show you here on James here in a second how it'll work. So I'm going to show you coming over. You're going to pin, just like a punch, you're going to strike down into the throat. Come over the hands, claw the eyes, and claw the eyes. Grab them by the shoulders, pull them in a knee, stomp the foot, and throw them away. Once again, we're going to pin, get the oxygen and air back into your lungs. Strike the throat. Claw the eyes. And the first one can either be a rake if he's got glasses or it can be a strike. Same thing with the second one. Strike or rake. Grab them, pull them into the knee, stomp the foot, and throw them away. Now an opponent. First thing you do is when they go to choke, pin these hands. Don't go way up here because this will jam your strike in. Pin right at the wrist. All you need is just a little bit of pressure and those wrists will bend. Now, without him, if I push this way, okay, you've got a really good strike going. That's the strike coming down. If I come under, it's not as effective. I mean, he can kind of fight it in a little bit. So that's why you want to strike in. You get a little bit more resistance on his part would be quicker to get off of you. So he grabs, pin the wrist, knock the arms, step in and strike that throat as hard as you can. Come over, claw the eyes, claw the eyes, grab him, knee him, stomp on the foot, try to hang on to the foot as you push away and pin that ankle down. Again, throat grab, pin the wrist, strike the throat. Try to step in and strike at the same time to get that body weight behind the strike. There again, it doesn't take much. All you have to do is press. Strike the eyes or claw. Same thing with your left. Grab him. Pull him into your knee. The knee can go to the solar plexus or the groin, depending on how he's set up. Stomp the foot and then throw him away and try to hang on to that foot. Let's try from this angle. Your opponent grabs, pin, strike into the throat. Comes just like a punch, comes up and then down. Claw, claw, grab him, knee him, stomp the foot, and throw him away. The 
The next technique we're going to be going over is called twisting talon. A, B, C, and D. The A, very, A B variations for straight on wrist grabs. Opponent comes up to grab you, probably to strike back and punch. So first thing you want to do is you're going to bring your palm up so it's easy to get a hold of his hand. You want to grab the meaty part of the hand with the thumb. So you're going to grab it there. As you step in, you're going to pull against the thumb because the thumb's the weakest part of any grip. And you're going to chop him straight into the throat. Again, we bring the palm up, come underneath the grab, pull away, and chop the throat. B variation, same type of release. Palm up and grab, pull in. Make sure you pull this elbow in because we're going to strike back with an elbow strike. So we come up, grab, pull in, cross the body, and then elbow strike back in. C and D are for cross arm wrist grabs. This time we're going to come over the top to grab the midi part. We're going to roll the hand over and then chop them in the throat. Again, counter grab the midi part of the hand, roll over and chop in the throat. D variation. This time we're going to grab the same way, but we're not going to roll over. We're going to step right in and uppercut the chin. Again, we grab. You should have a nice wrist lock at this point and uppercut the chin. Let's throw it on an opponent here. Let's go over this way for the first one. Straight arm wrist grab. First thing you want to do is bring this palm up so that you can get out of the wrist lock a lot easier. Grab the meaty part of the wrist from here. This way you can control it. Your thumb should be right here between some two knuckles. So your hand's in this position. So you're going to grab, step in, and chop. And at this point, you've got a real nice wrist lock. All you have to do is come across and you can take your opponent down. Again, bring your palm up, pull away, step in, chop the throat. B version, same type of grab. Come up, pull. This time we're going to come across the body and pull them into the elbow shot. This could be the throat, the ribs, whatever is the easiest target to get to. Come up, grab the meaty part, the thumb area. Make sure that your thumb is between the two knuckles. Step in, pull, and strike. Pull right into that elbow strike. The B version, or the C version, excuse me. This time we're going to still grab the mini part, but we're going to grab over the top. Fingers here, just like we said, the thumb's between the two knuckles. We're going to roll over. The hand will roll right out of it. Chop the throat. You've got another wrist lock here. You can do several things with that. Again, cross arm grab, grab the hand, roll in out of it, and chop the throat. D variation, same grab, the grabs are all the same on these. Come in, but this time instead of rolling over, we're going to straight up, pulling away from the thumb this way, right into the chin. Okay, again, grab, pull, strike to the chin. There again, if the guy's, your opponent's too tall, just go into the solar plexus. Go through them all one more time, starting with A, straight on. Palm up, grab, pull away, and chop. B version, palm up, pull away, and strike. C version, grab this way, roll over, chop the throat. D version, here, straight in and uppercut. And those are twisting talons. The next technique we're going to go over is called returning dragon. This is for a shoulder grab from the side. First thing you're going to do is you're going to step out and chop the arm to clear it out of the way. Then you're going to chop back into the back of the neck, grab him by the hair, Arm, smash him. Left chop to the neck. Grab him by the hair again. Always main, maintain control of that head. Bring that head right into your knee. Slam it down. Step it down to 12 o'clock. Keeping the head low. Bring your right arm up and then down and elbow the back of the spine as you go into soft bow. Again, we're going to step out, clear the arm, then extend it outward block. Chop the back of the neck. Cradle that head. Forearm smash with your left hand. Chop the back of the head one more time. Grab them. Knee to face. Step out. Elbow the back. 
what it looks like on somebody when they grab you. Take your extended outward block, chop into that best bicep on the crook of the arm. Chop the back of the neck, grab them. Pull them into the elbow strike. Chop the back of the neck again with your left hand, curling the back of the neck, knee them in the face. Pull them down, elbow the back. Again, put it grabs, chop, and then chop again to the neck. Grab them, elbow. Chop the side of the back of the neck again, grab them, knee them in the face, pull them down, elbow the spine. The next technique we're going to go over is called breaking the sword A and B. This is for a handshake or a grab with a sucker punch method. So the hand will be out just like if you're shaking someone's hand. First thing you want to do is you're going to grab the wrist, bend the fingers back, push in and up, get them off balance and on his toes. Then with your right foot, you're going to step to 9 o'clock, pull the arm up and over, break it over your left shoulder. Then you're going to elbow the solar plexus or break the rib cage. Once again, you're going to come in, bend the fingers back, step in as you push them up and back, get them off balance, swing around. Break the elbow over the left shoulder and elbow the ribs on the solar plexus. The B version. A is really good if you've got an opponent about your height. B it works if you've got your opponent who's taller than you or if you just want to control your opponent. Maybe you don't want to break his arm, you just want to control him. Same thing, handshake. This time you're going to take your, what they call a gakun, and place it right on that radial nerve. As you step in, you're going to press in and down. That'll make them bend that arm for you. Stay in close with your opponent. Pivot all the way around as you bring the head over the head, step, take him down to the ground. At this point, the elbow should be in almost like a Z method. If you needed to, you can pull up and break the elbow at that point. Again, one more time in the air, and I'll show you what I mean on somebody. Come in, press down and in, come over, take your opponent down to the ground, placing your knee on his root cage for control, and then if need be, you can pull up and break the arm. The A version. Guy comes up to shake your hand and hit you. You're going to bring his hand up. Now what you want to try to do is push in and up at the same time. Get him on his toes. Swing around. Break the elbow. Then the rib cage. Let's take from this angle over here. Okay, the handshake. He tries to throw a punch. In and up. Get him on his toes and off balance so he can't hit you. Swing around. As close to him as you can possibly get. Bring the hand up as high as you can. Break the elbow then the rib cage. One last time on A. He grabs, grab just like this. Bend the fingers back. If you need to, you can slide down a little bit more on step in and push up. Get some on his toes. That's why you didn't want to punch it. Swing around. Break the elbow, then the ribs. The B version. Your opponent's too tall, you just want to control him. This time you can take the gakun, place it right on that radial nerve, and as you step in, you're going to press down. Make him bend that elbow for you. Come all the way around, keep him in tight, take him to the ground. Now you'll see here, you got the arm this way. All you have to do is pull up. Again, from this side, place this knuckle right here on that radial nerve. Press down and in towards the direction you're going. Make him bend that elbow for you. Pivot all the way around. Keep him in close. Cross it down, place your knee on his rib cage, and if you need to, you just pull up until he slaps and breaks the arm. Okay, one last time from this side on the B variation. You grab, take this knuckle right here, place it right on that radial nerve. Step in and press. Pivot around, take him down, drop the knee. You got him in this L or Z mode, and lift up. The next technique we're going to go over is called Kempo Shield. There's an A and a B variation. The A variation is when an opponent just steps in and punches and you've got plenty of room. So what you're going to do is you're going to step into a fighting stance using your upwards block, making sure you're in a good solid fighting stance. And from here you can throw a reverse punch into the solar plexus or the ribs depending on what punch you threw. 
Technically, if you teach as a right punch, but it'll work for either one. It really won't make any difference. Once again, you step into fighting stance, throw an upwards block, keep the block up or by your head as you throw that punch so it can't come back and strike at you. Make sure you're in a good, solid, hard bow. Pull back into fighting stance. B version, you're in a close quarter. Maybe you're up against a wall in a parking lot. You don't have a lot of room to step forward or back. And you've already thrown your block. You've only got a few inches, so you can't exactly lock your punch out. So we're going to do what we call an inverted punch. You're going to use your hips to drive the punch up, almost like an uppercut, but the elbow stays within the rib cage area. You're going to drive up into the solar plexus. Again, we step in. Oh, The next technique we're going to go over is called Kempo Shield A and B. The A version is for someone who throws a right or a left punch. Technically, we're going to teach it for a right, but it doesn't really matter in the street, so it'll work the same. What you're going to do is a guy throws his right punch, you're going to step in with your upwards block into a good solid fighting stance. Maintain that block, you're going to throw a right punch with a good solid hard bow, either into the solar plexus or the rib cage, and come back to fighting stance. Once again, you step in and block. Reverse punch, back to stance. The B variation. B variation is for what we call a close quarter attack or a phone booth method. You're in a bar, you're in a crowded parking lot, you don't have a lot of room to move. You stepped in and you blocked, which all you've got is about six, eight inches. So you can't fully extend your punch out. So what we're going to do is what we call an inverted punch. You're going to drive the punch straight up using the hips and keeping the elbow within the rib cage area. So you're going to step in and block, drive up into the solar plexus just like an uppercut, and come back into stance. One last time. Block, up and punch, you know, the solar plexus or rib cage. On your opponent, the A version. Throws a right punch at you, we're going to block the punch, and strike in. Again, throws his punch, block, and strike. Strike from this side. Okay, your right punch, block, and punch. Now, just as I said, it worked for a left punch. So I'm going to have James throw a left punch. We're going to block the same exact way. Nothing's changed. All I do is strike just like I would normally would. Okay, one more time with the left. Block, punch. B version. Maybe we're in real close. Or I've stepped in and when I should have stepped back. He threw his punch. And I don't have room to lock out, so I can't get a good solid punch in there. So I'm going to drive up into him. Try to get those hips straight up in the air. Again, he throws his punch, block, and drive up. One last time. Throws his punch, block, drive up. Make sure this hand stays here, because you don't want to drop it so he can hit you or grab you. So keep that hand in check. Remember, drive those hips up, get that foot into a soft bow. Try to point those hips towards the ceiling. Okay, one last time. So it's a punch, block, and drive. The next technique we're going to go over in the yellow butt requirements is called, called arm bar. This is for a left grab of your right shoulder. What you want to do is you want to pin the hand, and as you do so, you're going to heel palm and knee at the same time. You're going to step back, roll your elbow over on top of his arm, make sure it's even, and press down. Again, we're going to pin, knee, and heel palm, step back, and roll the arm over. When it looks like an opponent is when they grab you, you're going to pin the arm, knee the groin and the jaw at the same time, step back, roll over so that the elbow is right on his, and just pull it straight down. Again, pin, 
knee, heel palm, step back, roll the arm over, and press down. Let's do it from this direction. And your opponent grabs. You want to pin, and you want to get to the point where you can pin and heel palm about the same time. Step back, go basically into a square horse, and roll straight down. Try it again. Pin, heel palm, back, roll it over, and straight down. That's called arm bar. The next technique is called Japanese stranglehold. This is when your opponents come from behind and put you in a left chokehold on the A version. And on the B version, it's a left chokehold with a hammerlock from behind. On the A version, the first thing you want to do is you want to turn your chin into his elbow. And tuck if you can. This will prevent him from choking you. And release some of the pressure. And you're going to step in and turn. Then you want to step into the elbow and open up a center line. You can extend the arm straight out. Elbow the solar plexus. Hammer fist the groin. Grab the groin and pull straight up as you drive the elbow into his chin. One more time. On the A version, you want to turn, drive your elbow straight into the solar plexus, hammer fist the groin, grab, and pull straight up as you drive the elbow into his chin. On the B version, this time he's got you in the same type of chokehold, but he's got your arm behind your back, trying to prevent you from striking him. So this time, instead of going into him, or stepping into the elbow like we did before, or this way we can't get to his center line. We're going to step in the opposite direction into the arm this time so we can get to his center line of the body. Same setup. Elbow, hammer fist, grab, pull straight up. Okay, again on the B version, the hand will go behind the back, turn the chin, step out, elbow, hammer fist, grab, and pull. Now on an opponent. James here will do it this way. Grabs with his left hand, turn the chin, step out. This opens up the center line. You're going to go right to the solar plexus with that elbow. Hammer fist the groin. Actually, pretty much double him over at this point. We're going to grab and try to pull straight up until the elbow reaches into the chin. Okay, let's do it straight on. Okay, he grabs, turn immediately. So this will give you a little air pocket. Step out, hammer fist. Groin, elbow to solar plexus, grab, and pull straight up into the chin. Okay. The B version, this time he's grabbed the arm as well as the choke. Now if I step out this way, I can't hit him. So I'm going to step into the arm, open up the center line, elbow strike the solar plexus, hammer fist the groin, grab, pull, and drive straight up. One more time on B. Step out, turn that chin, elbow the solar plexus. Hammer fist the groin, grab, and drive straight up into the chin. The next technique we're going to go over is called driving elbow. This is for a bear hug from behind, and it's a high bear hug. In other words, it's above the elbow joint itself. It's around the shoulder area. So what we're going to do is your opponent grabs you. You're going to step out and drive the elbow first. Okay, so we're going to step out, drive the elbow into the solar plexus, then we're going to hammer fist the groin. From here, we're going to take our left foot, do what we call a dance room, and we're going to step back to about 430. Then we're going to pivot around, do what we call a corkscrew, strike to the solar plexus, just like a back fist, but we're going to roll it over into a corkscrew method. This should double them over. Then we're going to pivot back into soft bow, and heel palm straight up as he does so into the nose. Again, the opponent grabs you, step out, drive the elbow into the solar plexus, get him to loosen up. Hammer fist the groin, step out, corkscrew back fist to the solar plexus, get him to double over, and then heel palm. It's like if you had a tennis racket in your hand, you're going to volley the ball straight up into the nose. Okay, now on an opponent, your opponent grabs, we're going to step out, hammer fist, or elbow solar plexus first. Hammer fist to the groin. Then we're going to step away, corkscrew back fist into the solar plexus, pivot around, heel palm on right into the face. One more time for this angle. Your opponent grabs, elbow the solar plexus, 
Hammer fist the groin. Step out. Corkscrew back fist. Then heel palm straight in the face. Straight this way. Then your foot grabs. Elbow, the solar plexus. Hammer fist the groin. Get out of the way. Just roll the soul, bring right into the solar plexus. Come back in and heel palm into the face. Okay, we'll do it from this angle again. Bear hug, step out. Clear these arms away, right into the solar plexus. Get a double over with that hammer fist. Corkscrew the solar plexus. Heel palm into the face. Let's do one time as a straight arm view. When it grabs, remember it's a high bear hug. Step out, drive, hammer fist. Corkscrew back fist, heel palm into the face. It's called driving elbow. The next technique we're going to go over is called crossing guard. This is one of your first techniques that's for an offensive motion. In other words, you're going to initiate the fight because you know it's going to come down to a fight. There's just no other way. So you want to get a head start on your opponent. In this case, you're going to use him at the side. He's over here, maybe he's facing you this way, or he's just side by side. What you're going to do is you're going to cross step and guard. This is where it's got its name, crossing guard. And from here, you've got a back fist into the solar plexus. Basically, from here, we're going to grab him by the collar or the shirt, whatever we can get a hold of. We're going to elbow, chop the neck, grab him, pull him into your knees, step out, and drive the elbow. It's basically just like returning dragon. Once again, we're going to cross, protect the groin in the center line, and protect the face. Back fist, the solar plexus, this could easily have gone to the face. Grab. Prefer we grab inside of the lapel and pull them around, it's a little easier. Pivot as you elbow strike, chop the neck, grab him by the hair, slam his face into your knee, step out, hold his head down, and drive that elbow onto the back. On an opponent. As your opponent's standing there, you know it's coming down to the fight, so you're going to initiate it. You're going to step in and just pop him real quick. Get him to double over. Use the element of surprise. Try to slip in, slip in and grab a lapel. This will pull him right into it. Keep him from turning on you. Chop the neck. Grab. Pull him into you. And then elbow the spine. Again, as he stands there, you're going to step in. Pop him real quick. Flip in and grab, pivot around and strike into the face. Chop the neck, grab, push him a little bit and get him off balance. Then pull him back in and elbow onto the back. One last time. We're here, your left foot is going to cross in front of your right. Left hand comes up, right back fist to solar plexus. Right hand slips in and grabs the lapel as your left elbow pivots, strikes the face. Your left hand will chop the side of the neck, grab, push away a little bit, and pull them back in to get them off balance. Step out into a good solid stance and drive your elbow into a good solid soft bow. Okay, the next technique we're going to go over is called circling thorn. This is your first knife attack. It's also your first weapons attack. What you have is, is a guy trying to thrust in with a knife strike. So as he thrust, as he pulls back that knife, you're going to sidestep and just place your hand right on his elbow. That'll stop him from pulling it out. Your left, right hand will grab his wrist, and you'll slide down in control with both hands. From here, let me step back just a little bit. From here, your right foot is going to cross in front of your left. As you pivot around, bring the knife over your head, you're going to step back with your left foot at the same time, driving the knife back into his rib cage. Once again, he thrust, stop it, grab. Control with both hands at this point. You're going to cross step with your right, bring the knife over the head, step back in with your left one more time, striking into the rib cage. On your opponent, as he thrust, you want to catch him coming back right here. All you do is just put your hand here. It's not any type of a strike. Right hand's going to come over the top and grab. We're going to slide down here. Then we're going to step through, bringing the knife over the head. And at this point, as you step back with your left foot, 
You're going to drive in at the exact same time. Give the knife back to him. Again, he comes in and he thrusts, pulls back, we stop, grab. Both hands so we can control the knife. Come around, bring that knife away from you so he can't strike you. Step back and drive into the rib cage. Let's try some over here. Okay, you thrust, grab. Both hands, right, then left. Step right foot, cross, then step back left, driving straight in. Again, just thrust as he pulls back, you're going to grab both hands and strike back in. The next technique we're going to go over is windmill guard. This is your double parry block. It's kind of like your vertical outward block parry. But instead of parrying this way, we're going to parry out. What you're going to do on the A bird is you're going to step and parry, just like we've learned in your step parry wheel kick. Left, right hand's going to come underneath your left and grab. Now you've got two choices here. You can parry and grab, or you can parry and strike, depending on what you're planning on doing and following up with. Once again on A, we're going to step, parry, right hand underneath, and grab or chop. The B version is the same thing. The next technique we're going to go over is called windmill guard. There's going to be an A, B, and C variation. A is for a right punch, B is for a left, and the C is going to be for an overhead club attack. On the A version, you want to step and parry just like you do on your wheel kick. And from here, your right hand is going to come underneath your left, and you're going to either chop or grab your opponent's arm, depending on what you're trying to do afterwards. And then follow from here, we're going to do a, a wheel kick into the solar plexus. Again, we're going to step and parry, either chop or grab, and then wheel kick into the solar plexus. The B version is basically the same thing, but we're going to go weak side and do the same thing. This time we're going to step with our right, parry with our right, left hand underneath the right arm, grab or chop, and from here we're going to throw a left wheel kick. Again, step and parry, grab, wheel kick the solar plexus. C version. If you notice, both of these are to the outside of the arm. This time we're going to go to the inside of the arm. As your opponent throws an overhead club attack, we're going to slide into cap. Do the same type of a block. You could chop it, but with a club, you better try to grab it, control that weapon. We're going to front snap, kick the groin, plant down. Bring the knee up. Side thrust the kneecap as we sit down, back fist in the temple as he doubles over. Again on C, we're going to slide into cat, block the inside of the right club this time, front snap, kick the groin, set down, bring the knee up, side thrust, kick the kneecap as you land, back fist the temple. Okay, the A version, your opponent throws a right punch, one, two, it should be just that quick if not quicker. You're going to control that hand, or you can chop it away. Either way, you're going to leave his hand up here and check. And then roundhouse kick into the solar plexus. Or well, wheel kick, I should say. Again, punch it. One, two. It's parry, grab. Wheel kick into the solar plexus. Okay. The B version. Let's do the B version. The B version, he throws his punch. One, two. Okay, just like before. Roundhouse kick with your left this time. Again, B, one, two. Real quick. And kick. Last time. One, two. You should try to get in there as fast as you can. Kick the solar plexus. And the C version. This is another way you can use a windmill guard block. As he comes in with an overhead club, we're going to get out of the way of the club, which is an important thing and control that club so he didn't try to re uh, redirect it towards you. Front snap, kick the groin. Plant down, side thrust, kick the knee, back fist the temple. Now from here, since you've already grabbed the hold of the handle, you can go into wrist locks, arm locks, and throws. Again, he comes with a club, one, two. Front snap, kick the groin. 
plant down. Side thrust kick as you land back fist into the temple. Last time on this one. One, two, grab. Kick the groin. Plant down. Side thrust. Back kick. The next technique we're going to go over is called scooping the kick. There's an A, B, C, and D variation to this. On the A and B variation, your opponent's throwing a right front snap kick at you. So as he throws that right kick, we're going to get out of the way, slide into a slight cat stance, try to sweep him right on past us with that leg. Grab him by the shoulders and drive the knees straight into his back as we pull him in. Again on A. We're going to step back slightly into cat, sweep him right on bias, grabbing the shoulders, and driving the knee into his back. On the B version, now on A, the guy when he lands, he's got his feet pretty close together, almost in a neutral stance. On the B version, as you swing around, you've got a pretty good swing going, so his legs are a little farther apart this time. So we're going to grab, and we're going to do almost like a thrust kick or a rising kick up between the legs into the groin area. Get on B, we're going to sweep the leg back, grab, and drive that foot right up between the legs. On C version, this time he's throwing a right, or I should say a left front snap kick at us. We're going to step back to cat and scoop. This time he'll be facing us rather than turned around. We're going to immediately do a front snap kick. So as we step back and scoop, we're going to kick into the groin. Try to get that kick in as he's landing downwards. Get on C, he throws a left kick, scoop it, and kick the groin, and land. The D variation, same thing as C, he's got his left kick going, but this time he's got his hands up like he's going to throw a jab or a punch at you. So as we scoop back, we're going to front snap, kick the groin, this time we're going to land and smother that lead hand, prevent him from trying to punch or jab at us. Should be in a good soft bow, from here we're going to pivot right into the chin as we bring that hand down. Get on D, scoop back, kick, smother with your left or your backhand, pivot into horse as you elbow into the chin. On an opponent, the A version, he's throwing a right kick, we're going to scoop it back as we step, grab, pull him in, drive the knee to the back. Again, he throws his right kick, scoop, grab, knee. Okay, one last time on that one. Comes in, scoop past, grab if you need to, shuffle in, there's no problem with that, and drive the knee into the back. B version, same kick, right kick. Same kick, it's a right kick. This time we're going to scoop and we're going to grab his back legs pretty far apart. So we're going to come up the middle, catch that groin from the back. Again, as he scoops, scoop the kick. Grab him and control him. Bring him off balance as you kick straight up into the groin area. C version. Throws a right front snap kick this time. As he throws his kick, scooping the cat, and front snap kick as he lands. Okay, again, he throws his kick, scooping the cat, and kick as he lands. Okay, and make sure you don't step back too far, or you're going to be out of reach of that kick. One last time on C. Throws his kick. Back and kick. It's as simple as that. Last one, D version. This time he's got his hands up like he's going to jab at you. Throws his kick. Boom. We come in and smother. Trap this hand and elbow the jaw. Again, he throws his kick. Here, smother, elbow. One more time. Same as C. We're going to do the same thing. He comes in. We're going to cat, kick, smother this hand, and draw him into that chin strike with your uppercut elbow. Those are called scooping the kick. All right, the next technique is called dancer. This is for a two-hand choke from behind. Now what you've got is you've got an opponent coming in from behind, either grabbing your gi or your shirt, or trying to choke you with both hands. First thing you want to do is you're going to duck under the, under the arms. 
and strike with your left hand at the same time. This is where the dancer step comes from. This is what we call a dancer step. You're going to step and strike, trying to come underneath it, striking the groin. You're going to pivot, strike the groin again, and get a good soft bow. Then you're going to cross out and get away from your opponent. Again, we're going to dance right underneath the arms, left chop, right chop into the groin. Swing that right leg all the way around as far as you can, either the 3 o'clock or 2.30, and get yourself ready to strike again. C -ver B version, same thing as A. Strike the groin, pivot, strike the groin. This time we're going to spin out. As we spin out, we're going to throw in a ridge hand into the body, or it could be a corkscrew back fist. Again, on the B version, left strike, pivot, right strike. As you spin out, throw your ridge hand into the throat, corkscrew back fist into the solar plexus. D version, this time you want a little bit more hands-on control. We're going to chop the groin, chop the groin, this time we're not going to spin out. We're going to bring the knee up, drive it straight down, slamming the knee into the ground. Step into about 5, 36 o'clock, lining your foot up with your back, with their back, coming to cat, and back kicking them. Again, chop the groin, chop the groin. Bring the knee up, driving it down. Step forward, come to cat, and back kicking to the back. On an opponent, two-hand choke. Let's go strike from this one. Two hand choke, chop in the groin, come under the arms and chop again. From here, just spin all the way out. Again on A, under the arms, this is important, can't go through them, you got to go under them. And then chop again, and then spin on out of it. B version, same as A, but we're going to take it one step farther. Chop, chop, reach hand in the groin, come out. Like I said, reach hand to the throat, or you can get a corkscrew back fist into the solar plexus. B again, reach hand, reach hand, out, reach hand to the throat, or back fist to the solar plexus. The C version, just a little bit. This time we're not going to spin out, we're going to stay right next to him. Chop the groin. Chop the groin. We're going to come up and behind the knee, slamming it to the ground. We're going to adjust our stance and we're we'll right in line with his back and then back kick him in the back. See again. Chop the groin. Chop the groin. Side thrust into the behind the knee. Readjust your stance, line yourself up, and back kick. And those are called dancers A, B, and C. The next technique is called opponents of signs. There's an A, B, and C, and D variation. On the A variation, each opponent just has one hand on your shirt or your shoulder, kind of like they're trying to escort you out the door. What you want to do is you want to step slightly forward and to the right, and you're going to do what they call a wing chop into the throat. Now, you don't want to come out where they can see it and block it. You want to come up straight up the belly button and into the throat. So on the A version, you're going to come up, chop the throat. On the the other half of it, you're going to step in, chop the arm or grab it, and do a hair fist or a chop into the collarbone. Again on A, we're going to wing chop the throat, come across, either chop or hair fist into the collarbone. It's almost like your stop hits, but we're doing it at an angle. B version, this time they have both hands on your shoulder, so it prevents you from throwing a wing chop at them. So we're going to go to the next easiest target. We're going to step out, hammer fist the groin. Then we're going to cross step and hammer fist his other groin. Again, we're going to step out, hammer fist the groin. Now, you practice this, try to do this part as quick as you can. You want to get in and out as fast as you can. Go to what we call twist stance and then hammer fist the other groin. So we got A version, which is your wing chop. Come across, grab and hammer fist. You have your B version, which is step out, hammer fist the groin. Hair fist the other groin because you got both hands on your shoulders. 
C version. This time they got one hand on each arm or somewhere up on your arm. They're trying to pull you apart and escort you out that way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to counter grab them, pulling them into you as you go to a right cap. You're going to back kick into the ribs of the knee, pivot around, pull the other guy in, back kick into the ribs of the knee this way. C version again. From here you're going to counter grab, pull, back kick, pivot, back kick. D version, the final one. This time they got both hands, so it's going to be hard to counter grab. So this time you want to step out slightly, you pull them both in, getting them off balance. This will bring one foot forward and brace themselves. Side thrust kick the knee, side thrust kick the other knee. Get on D, pull them in, side thrust kick, side thrust kick. Now on opponent. In the first half, what we got here is you're going to step slightly forward and to the right. And you're going to come in and wing chop straight up the center line and into the throat. On the first half again on A, step in and wing chop. What I'm going to do is James run around here real quick because it's going to play both parts here. This opponent's out of the way. So now I'm going to clear this arm off and hammer fist or chop. Again, I'm going to step in and wing chop this opponent. Clear, hammer fist and chop. If you can, try to grab the arm. The B version. Just stay there. Okay. The B version. This time he's got both hands on the shoulder. Okay, so I'm going to hammer fist this guy. And then I'm going to cross step and hammer fist this guy. Again, hammer fist, hammer fist. Right into the groin area. That's the B version. The C version, you have one hand on you. What you're going to do is you're going to try to counter grab. Pull them in, back kick, pivot around a soft bow, get your stance back, and back kick again, either the ribs or the knees. B ver C version again. Hands are out a little bit, counter grab, pull, back kick, readjust your cat stance, pull, and back kick. D version. This time you got both hands on you. Since we can't counter grab, what we're going to try to do is we're going to pull them in. Get them off balance. Break one knee out, bring the other one up, and break the other knee out. Okay, again on D, got both hands on you. Pull them in, break, come up, and break on the other opponent. And that's opponents at sides A through D. The last requirement for the yellow belt of the Kempo Jiu-Jitsu system is called Returning Serpent. This is for someone that's come up and done a two-hand grab on you. First thing you're going to do is you're going to pop up and grab the elbows. Try to control them. Do a front snap kick to the groin. Set back into fine stance at this point and do a front thrust kick into the solar plexus. Again, pop the elbows. Front snap kick. Step back front thrust kick on your opponent. As he grabs, try to kick, control these elbows at the same time. Then you're going to step back, get your distance, and front thrust kick them off of you. Again, he grabs, pop the elbows, kick the groin. Step back, front thrust kick. You can try to use the palms of your heels to come right underneath in the medial nerves. Give him that good initial shock to loosen his grip. Try to heel palm up as you grab and kick. Then loosen that grip to not get it off of you. Then step back, controlling the hand so it doesn't re-grab you. And then kick him off of you. Okay, one last time. It's called returning circuit. Heel palm, kick, step back, front thrust kick. And that is the last technique for yellow belt.